In the interest of saving absolutely everybody's time, I feel like doing a generalized statement to all legacy media inside of the Matrix. And I'm doing it to save their time and mine, as well as protect the minds of the masculine youth for the future. I want to make it very clear that the legacy media, which I enjoyed the company of today, have made a massive mistake and missed a chance to do some genuinely interesting journalism. After being unfairly incarcerated in a Romanian dungeon, I thought that even the BBC, in its absolute arrogance and hubris, would be smart enough to come to me after six months being the first interview I gave to The Matrix, and be smart enough to ask questions people were genuinely interested in. What's it like inside of a Romanian prison cell? How were you treated? Why was a person's liberty deprived of them for six months without charge? How is your mental state post your unfair incarceration? Things people are genuinely interested in hearing, but instead they came with the same old talking points. And I'd like to address all of these talking points to the Matrix media now to prevent this happening again, because it's a monumental waste of everybody's time. I say things on the internet. I've been making content on the internet for a very long time. Finding a clip from 2016, eight years ago, finding a four hour long podcast from 2016, ignoring all context, ignoring everything positive I say about men and women and the world, and taking a single sentence and trying to pretend that's my entire worldview is not the bombshell you think it is. Nobody cares. Everybody understands what satire is. Everybody understands what a joke is. Everybody understands it's the internet. Everybody understands all of these things. Plus, the people who know the truth of my message are very capable of understanding what is satirical and what is true. People are not as stupid as you'd like them to be. Sitting down with me and missing the chance to have a genuinely interesting interview with genuinely interesting questions that people are interested in hearing the answers to, and instead attempting this attack to get this bombshell aha moment is never gonna work. Because one, I'm too smart for all of you. And two, nobody cares. Nobody cares I made a joke eight years ago because everybody knows I was joking and everybody knows the truth of my message. So you're wasting absolutely everybody's time. Worse than wasting everybody's time, what you're genuinely doing is damaging the minds of young men. And I think I have a responsibility as one of the most influential men on the planet to protect the minds of young men and all of the men who look up to me. Nobody, no young man below the age of 30 has any interest in what the BBC or the legacy media say. They don't care and they don't watch it unless I appear on there. So when I sit across from a reporter who says that having a nice car makes you a misogynist, it's disingenuous. And also, also, for financial it's, success correct. with a Bugatti and a cigar, but it comes with a side order of misogyny. How does having a Bugatti and a cigar come with misogyny? Because it's all mixed together in what you teach. I find that to be extremely dangerous rhetoric. I find that to be extremist rhetoric. And I think it's very dangerous for young men to think if they work hard for something in their lives, if they dedicate themselves and they're diligent and hardworking and they try hard, that they'll be a bad person. I hate the idea of a world where a man who dedicates himself to excellence so he can enjoy the finer things in life is criticized and ostracized and called horrible names purely because he's been a hardworking male. And I don't like young men hearing these extremist ideas. And they're only going to hear these extremist ideas if they watch the BBC, which is an extremist organization. And they're only going to watch the BBC if I talk to the BBC. So I feel like now that these people have proved themselves to be extremist and very damaging to the minds of young men, I have an obligation to not interact with them very much because I don't want them spreading their extremist propaganda. We have a men's mental health crisis. Young men are disenfranchised. The suicide rate amongst men is much higher than women, and everybody pretends to care. But when I come along and say, I am a man, I've been a man, I know how it feels to be a sad man and a happy man, and I found happiness through masculine achievement and strength, through working hard in the gym, through dedicating myself, through building a life worth living, through taking care of the people who I love, both male and female, through becoming financially successful, through sticking up for myself, through having opinions, 
through being a man of honor and courage. When I do these things, I'm ostracized and they're attempting to destroy my life. This goes beyond a few media interviews. They are attempting to put me in jail and destroy my life because I am helping young men. They don't care about men's mental health. They have no interest at all. In fact, the ideas they purport, like I've just explained, are genuinely damaging to the mindset of young men. On top of this, they waste everybody's time because their aha moment never works. Nobody's interested in it. And I destroy them with ease. But my hourly rate is high. It's not very fun for me to do. I just do it. It has to be done. But I don't particularly enjoy it. I allowed you into my home. I'm, I'm doing you a favor, giving you the first interview I'm giving to the public. You don't come here with a position of authority. You're not the police. I don't respect the BBC. I don't know you. You do not come here with a position of authority over me. We are equals. We are people. We're citizens of the world. And we sit here as equals. And I see you as my equal. And if you ask me questions, I can ask you questions back. For you to come here and sit down and pretend you're the Gestapo and that you don't have to answer my questions is, is disingenuous is because I don't owe you anything. You're asking questions and you answer But I don't owe no, however it, you want. This is a conversation. And I don't owe you any degree of authority over me. So let's make that clear. And that doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or from the BBC or the CNN. I'm here to you answer your say. questions and be honest with you and do you a favor. Great. But, and I'm doing you a favor. But you come here with loaded questions. You're trying to paint a narrative of me, which is negative. I'm asking you and about that's things fine. you've said that people are concerned about. And that's fine. You but you're not going to sit here and say you don't answer my questions because you're not above me. So, in the interest of spreading good and positivity in the world, which is my number one objective, I, have make, I am making this clear to all legacy media outlets. I will no longer interact with you for free. Nobody cares that you lie about me and nobody cares what you say. You have destroyed all of your credibility in the last four years of constantly lying about everything. And continuing to lie about me will only destroy your credibility further. I have an organization called Tape Pledge, which you can see. Go to CobraTape.com and click at Tape Pledge and you will see that I dedicate $25 million a year to feeding children both male and female, in war-torn countries. I would like to think that even the legacy media can agree that feeding children in Sudan or Turkish children after an earthquake or Syrian children in refugee camps is a pretty positive thing to do for the world. In my last BBC interview, she tried to spin it and say that what I'm doing is somehow negative because I'm only doing it for myself. But this is the level of delusion these people operate under. Because some people would look at that and say, okay, so before you got money, from attracting people to your website by making controversial comments, but that might have got you into trouble. And so now you're looking for a new market. You're looking for a new market of followers who are attracted by a different sort of persona. I've always done the charity work, so that is obviously incorrect. And I have proof that I've always done the charity work, so you're wrong. Tate Pledge is funded 100% by me. This is my personal money. But I believe if the legacy media is intent on spreading hate, intent on spreading extremist ideologies, which it seems they are. Not only the extremist ideology that men shouldn't work hard, but also a bunch of other ones, which I don't need to mention because most thinking people understand what the legacy media is trying to purport on not only the population, but the young children of the world. And what they are trying to push is far more damaging than me saying you should go to the gym. Therefore, I no longer have any interest with interacting with the legacy media for free, because I don't want their extremist views shown to young children without doing some good for the world. My fee from this point onwards is $50,000 and a box of chocolates. That is what it is going to cost you to speak to me. If you are from the Matrix, you will give me $50,000 in advance, which will be donated to Take Pledge which will be used to feed children in war-torn countries. And you will also bring a box of chocolates to my gate, which I will ingest as I listen to your Matrix propaganda and destroy you. Because I deserve chocolates if I have to put up with you. I am an extremely successful man, and my time is valuable. And you're wasting mine, yours, and everybody else's. So if you're gonna come along with your extremist ideas, I would at least sleep better at night if you were feeding some poor innocent children somewhere in the world. But you have no interest in doing any good for the earth. You're only interested in spreading hate, unlike me who wants to do good things. So, post my BBC interview, I've been contacted by the New York Times, CNN, the Clinton News Network, all of them. And they're all desperate to interview me because they understand the number of views it will get. Ah, I wanna try now, I wanna try now. And they all wanna try a different version of the same aha moment, not understanding 
because they're completely detached from reality, that it's not an aha moment and nobody cares. They're not interested, they're not smart enough to look at the board of the chessboard and say, this isn't gonna work. Let's ask him questions people actually care about. They're not that smart. So if you wanna waste your time and mine, that's what it's gonna cost you. $50,000, I managed to procure meals at around 80 cents each, so we'll feed over 60,000 children for wasting an hour of my time, plus a box of chocolates. That is my fee from this point forward. I will still speak to non-matrix media outlets who are interested in the truth, interested in asking interesting questions that people wanna hear the answers to. I will still be available to do my own podcasts and tell the truth. But as long as legacy media retain their reputation as peddlers of extremist ideology, I no longer have any interest in promoting them and making them relevant. It's better we allow them to become irrelevant, which they are doing, through their own dishonest actions. I will no longer interact with any of you for free ever again. So, to the 64 journalists who have emailed me so far since the BBC interview, do you have $50,000 in a box of chocolates? Because I'm not interested in speaking to you for any other reason. I actually think I'm being quite kind only charging 50 grand. I should charge 200 grand, but I'm a nice man. And $50,000 will still feed a lot of children. I promise any legacy media outlet that pays me the fee can have an interview. And I also promise to provide full accounting and receipts to prove that that money goes directly to charity to feeding children in war-torn countries. But I will no longer allow the matrix propaganda machine to infect the minds of innocent children by using my relevance to achieve interviews and get views they would never normally get to spread hateful propaganda. If you can't afford me, you're going to have to go back to just lying about me without speaking to me. Because God knows the truth, I know the truth, most of the world knows the truth, and I genuinely believe that Allah is the best of planners, and whatever happens to me, regardless of whether I am martyred, regardless of whether they put a bullet in my brain, I know what I have done is good for the world, and the things I will do will continue to be good for the world.